Thank you, and good to see you this morning. It's uh, Palm Sunday. It is the uh, day in which uh, we celebrate. Remember that uh, Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem, and uh, children and adults alike uh, wave palm branches, and they laid down their cloaks before him, uh, celebrating, thinking that he was coming to establish himself as king. And uh, he was coming, of course, we know, to bring uh, peace uh, for our hearts, uh, to bring forgiveness of our sins. And as uh, Tyler talked about this morning, we celebrate on Friday, Good Friday, and uh, we're going to celebrate communion together on Friday, as we will this morning after the, uh, the end of the service. Uh, but as a reminder that uh, Jesus came and he shed his blood uh, for, for your sins and mine, that we could be forgiven. And uh, that is what Easter is all about. Uh, it's a highlight of the year for us as Christians, and we want to remember that. And uh, so we're going to take just in a moment here to pray and uh, just thank the Lord for uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, I'm going to continue on our series this morning, uh, and then we'll have an Easter message next week by Ethan, but uh, uh, just uh, about our living faith in Jesus Christ and, and what it means to uh, follow Christ, and are we living that out? And uh, it's more than, again, just... Uh, as we began the year, more than, than just knowledge and uh, thinking about, uh, 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 even as we talked about in our, Sunday, our adult Sunday school class this morning, it's more than uh, just saying we've prayed a prayer, uh, but to actually know that uh, uh, we have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, so we want to think about that. We're talking about faith this morning in Hebrews 11 and how so many have come before us uh, through the generations and uh, have believed by faith and have followed Christ by faith. And uh, we uh, want to continue on in that uh, in our own lives, in our own relationship with the Lord. And uh, so we're going to go to the Lord uh, in prayer this morning, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll jump into the message here today. But let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can gather in this place, and we thank you again for the freedom to worship. Uh, we thank you for the freedom that we have to speak and to teach your word, and we pray that we will not uh, take that for granted. I pray this morning, Lord, that we'll be reminded of the, the very understanding that so long ago, some close to 2,000 years ago, that Jesus came into Jerusalem and Lord, as the people, the, the Hebrew people, the, the Jewish people would choose their lamb on that first day of the week that would be the one that would be uh, sacrificed, Lord, at the end of the week for Passover, how they didn't even realize that Jesus himself was the Passover lamb who was coming to give a permanent answer to our sin. That when he would come and he would shed his blood on the cross, Lord, that it would be uh, the ultimate sacrifice. So we think about Palm Sunday and how you gave of yourself for each one of us. Lord, may we think of that this morning and in the joy of today the joy, as Tyler talked about, I think that, you know, we just, uh, uh, we have uh, so much to be thankful for. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pour out our hearts before you this morning. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you that we can open up your word and help us, Lord, to focus on what it means to have this living faith, what it means to have faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we pray that you will bless this time together and you will bless the communion table to follow. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I had a story that uh, um, Carolyn's in uh, the children's church, I think, this morning, uh, but uh, 
uh, the pastor's wife uh, shared with me, my wife, and uh, and uh, she said, I have, I have a story for you that you can tell in church. And I said, all right, so let's hear it. So I, she told it to me, and, and it, took me, it, it took me a minute um, and to, to get it, but uh, I want to tell it to you this morning and uh, just uh, kind of put my own uh, uh, twist on it here to, uh, today, but uh, I thought it was good. Anyway, uh, Oli and Lena uh, took a trip to Israel. And uh, Ole and Lena took a trip to Israel, and uh, while they were over there, uh, Lena passed away. And uh, the undertaker came to Ole, and he said, Ole, he said, I, I hate to say this, but he said, to, uh, uh, to get Lena's body back to the United States, it's going to cost you $10,000. Or you can bury Lena here in Israel for $150. And so what would you like to do? And Ole thought for just a moment, and, and he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ship her body home. And the undertaker said, Ole, did you understand what I, I told you? It'll cost you $10,000 to, to ship Lena home, and, and you could just have her buried here in, in Israel for $150. And Ole said, oh, yeah. He said, but he said, you heard about Jesus who 2,000 years ago, he said, you know, he died and they buried him and he rose again. He came back to life. And he said, I just can't take that chance. <laughs> and that was a good one. That came from your pastor's wife, so I'm blaming I'm blaming that on Carolyn, so as you go out of church this morning, you say, you say uh. it's good to laugh. It's good to have hope and joy. To know that we have a living faith in Jesus Christ, no matter what. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. And I want to read from that scripture that you have there in your notes, and uh, then a number of things to, to point out to you even before we will celebrate the communion table, each of us thinking about our own lives. But, uh, oh, faith is important. Because it is. At different moments in all of our lives, from whether we were little or we were adults, placing that faith in Christ and saying, you know what? I believe. I believe in what Jesus did for me, that he died. Therefore, to understand, just even as I have there in the notes that, that F.B. Meyer said, unbelief puts our circumstances between us and God. Faith puts God between us and our circumstances. I even think about that with the very fact of puts our sin before him, and he takes it upon himself. He took it upon himself as he gave his life at the cross, gave his life for you. And as we read that scripture this morning, be thinking about how the writer in Hebrews understood that we can be confident in our hope, in our assurance even though we have not seen Jesus face to face yet of what he did for us. And so I want you to follow along, if you will, in Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read just those first seven verses of uh, this morning, and then we'll talk about those. It says this for us here this morning. Now faith is the confidence of what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And this is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better sacrifice, excuse me, better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commend, commanded as righteous, 
when God spoke well of his offerings. By faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about these things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is, keep, that is in keeping with faith. And I have six things there this morning that I want us to think about from this passage. Things that I think are very important for us to understand about faith and how it is that we understand it and apply it to our lives. Because it's more than just talking, it's uh, actually believing. And uh, that is what makes our faith real, is that belief. And uh, so I want you to think about that for yourself and how you know your faith is real. Not just saying that you know about God. Anybody can say that. Think about, we know that in Scripture that that the demons themselves acknowledged who Jesus was. And yet, they were far from him. There are many people who would say they believe in God, but they don't have a living faith in him. And I want us to think about what it is to have our confidence and our hope in him. Because you see, first point here this morning is this. Faith sees the invisible. Faith sees the invisible. God wants us to believe and to understand in who he is and what he does, even though we have not seen him. Even as that scripture says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for. What is faith? It's the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. And it's certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. That's from the Living Bible. But we can have confidence and assurance that if Jesus died on the cross for us, we can believe in it, that he died for our sins. Faith sees the invisible. Faith believes in what we cannot see. Because the writer there says in verse 3, by faith, by believing God, we know that the world and the stars, all the things in creation, the writer says, came about even though he could not see it when God spoke. It says that God's command, that what was seen was not made out of what was visible. Faith sees the invisible. And I want you to see that in your life and to believe that in your life and in your walk of faith. That there are things that you cannot see and yet you know you have promises. God has made promises to you and to me of eternal life, of forgiveness of sin. That we know that if God says it, we can believe it, even though maybe we don't see it in, in something that we can hold in our hands, it's true. I encourage you to do that because so oftentimes uh, if, if something isn't tangible, if we can't seem to, to hold it or to have it proved to us, well, then we kind of want to question about it. But the very truth is that, that when we believe, we are believing in things that, that have not yet been seen. And, and the writer in Hebrews would go on to say, you know what? Abraham, even though he would not see all the promises made to him, he believed. He believed in what God had promised to him. He believed to the point that, that when God said, 
Abraham, I want you to take your son, your one and only son Isaac, and sacrifice him and give his life. That the writer there in Hebrew says, Abraham was at that point of willing to do it. He took Isaac and he took him and he, he tied him up and he had the he had everything ready to go and he lifted that knife and he was ready to take Isaac, his, his promised son, to take his life. And you know why he was willing to do that? Because it says in the scripture that Abraham had reasoned that if God could give him Isaac, God could also raise him from the dead. Faith sees the invisible. That we know that if, that, that when we are told in the scripture that Jesus would tell his disciples as he told us through his word, you know what? I'm going to die and on the third day I'm going to rise again. You can believe it. We can believe it. We can believe it and trust in it and know that that's true. To understand that that is such a crucial part of the foundation of our faith. And I read an illustration that I thought was quite good this week about a young man who lost his eyesight in an explosion during World War II. And a British entertainer had come along and was trying to comfort him. And the soldier didn't even need comfort because he was a believer in Jesus Christ. And he said, you know, it doesn't really matter, he said, whether I can see or not. He said, because you see, I'm going to be a minister one day. And he said, you don't have to have eyes to please God. I thought, that is true. You don't have to have eyesight to please God. That's why there was such a difference when I shared this illustration not too long ago, but the, Ros the Russian cosmonaut by the last name of Titov when he was in outer space, mocked and said, I didn't see God when I was in space. I couldn't see him. I didn't see him. As compared to an American astronaut by the name of James, a man by the name of James McDivitt, who when he traveled in space, he said, I did not see God looking into the space cabin window of our ship. But he said, I recognized his hand and his work in the stars. I saw God's work because when God spoke, the world came into order. Faith in the invisible. Second one there for us to stop and think about this morning is that God wants us to understand in our living faith, in our walking with him, but faith hears the inaudible. Faith hears the inaudible. That we are to stop and to understand that God still speaks. He speaks through his word. It's through his word that we get his message. His word is God-breathed. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. When God speaks, he wants us to listen and to apply his word to our lives, and to know that he is still speaking to us all this time later from, from the very fact that his word is eternal, but, but the very fact that his, that his word is, is, is uh, as I said, as the scripture teaches us, but living and active, and it should be changing us. And no, we don't, we don't hear it out loud. We don't hear it in that... We need to be hearing voices, but to, but to understand that, that it's still there. And I read, too, that at any one time, there are about 9,000 radio signals traveling through the air around us. Unless you have a radio turned on or tuned in, you don't hear it. Those radio waves are coming and going all the time. And we don't know it. We don't see them. And yet they're there. It's only when we tune in and we listen that we can hear 
the message. And I thought how true that is for us as Christians. When we open up God's word and we really listen and we think about it, and we allow God speak to speak to us, as it says, by faith, believing God, we know that, that when he spoke, the world came into order. And the truth is that we know that when we can open up his word and he speaks to us, we can hear him. The same as, as for all eternity. It isn't different for those that, that heard from him in the Old Testament times to those of us who to read his word now. No, it's the same message, the same truths. And how great that is that faith hears the inaudible. Faith speaks to us through God's word. And we are called to believe and to listen and to follow him by what he says to us. Faith also believes, third thing there for us this morning, faith believes the incredible. Faith believes in the incredible. Faith sees the invisible. Faith hears the inaudible through God's word. And faith believes the incredible. While so many people doubt and are pessimists, about what it means to believe. A lot of people want to say it's impossible. There is no such thing as God. Or if there is a God, he's not at work. But the truth is the person with faith is thinking and understanding that God can accomplish what he wants to accomplish and he can accomplish the incredible. So many people say, I don't believe in miracles, and I don't believe in eternity. Can't believe the story of creation. But you know what? It's through faith that we understand that God brought everything into order. It is by faith that we can understand that he saved us from our sin. Faith believes the incredible. There are many people we'll run into nowadays that would say, we just are who we are and there's nothing eternal about us and, and when, when our life comes to a close, that's it. We go back, we're just dust, we're, we're food for the worms. And God says, I have created you with a soul and a spirit. And I've created you unique in this world and I want you to believe in the incredible things that I can do using your life if you're willing to surrender and we can still believe in miraculous things in God taking life a simple life ordinary lives plain lives and taking and doing incredible things, God is still at work. He's still doing those things around us. To understand that if he can create the world out of nothing, he can still do incredible things today. By faith, Abel obeyed God and brought an offering that pleased God more than Cain's offering. God accepted Abel and proved it by accepting his gift. And even though Abel is long dead, we can still learn from him, the scripture says. To believe incredible things that Enoch trusted God, a man of the Old Testament. And his life was so pleasing to God that the scripture tells us when the moment was right, he did not experience death. Enoch was taken directly to heaven. And I believe that. And you can believe that. To understand that God is still doing incredible things because he's still saving people. Every day, 
He is still leading people into a personal relationship with himself. How incredible that is. How incredible is it that he loves you every day, even on days when you don't deserve to be loved? He loves you. Fourth thing for you to understand there this morning about faith is that faith thinks the unthinkable. Faith thinks the unthinkable. And when we think about what does that mean, it means again, as I mentioned, that there are doubters and pessimists who declare it's impossible, can never be done. The truth is the person with faith is thinking of ways to accomplish what cynics refuse sometimes to consider. And by that, I mean this. We are called never to give up. I put before you and challenge you this morning, as I need to challenge myself, that when I talk about faith thinks the unthinkable, that there are times when I think, (laughs) not going to happen. God won't do it. God won't change a situation. That person will never come to Christ. And you know, I think Jesus challenges us as we pray and live out our faith to say, no. If God wills it, it's possible. Faith thinks the unthinkable. There are situations in which we want to say again, something won't happen. We're doubters. And God says, believe me. Pray for that person that doesn't know me. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on God changing that person through the power of his Holy Spirit. Faith thinks the unthinkable. God wants us to believe in him not just 50% of the time, 100% of the time, trusting in him, understanding that that he can move in situations that, that we cannot see, hear, understand, and yet he's at work. And so therefore, fifth thing there this morning for us to think about is that faith accomplishes the impossible. Faith in Jesus Christ accomplishes the impossible. That we understand that after we think the unthinkable, God can accomplish the impossible. Charles Spurgeon, the great uh, pastor from the 19th century, says, God delights in impossibilities. Charles Spurgeon said, one man says, I will do as much as I can. And Charles Spurgeon said, any fool can do that. He that believes in Christ does what he cannot do. He attempts the impossible and performs it. That Jesus does more than we can imagine or ask. It was Jesus who said to us, through his word, and we're called to believe it. Faith accomplishes the impossible. When Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, how much can you move? Help me out. A mountain. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, if you've ever seen a mustard seed, they are very small. And yet they grow to be a big plant, almost like a tree. And Jesus' message was, if you have faith, you can see the impossible accomplished through Jesus himself. We can be mountain movers as Christians. 
And it doesn't mean that we just come and tell what God what to do and somehow try to manipulate the situation. It must be his will. It must be his way. But there are things that are definitely impossible for us to do and accomplish. But when it is God's will, and we go before him and believe and pray, we can see the impossible done. And we can see things change. And we can see what a difference that God alone can make because we've trusted him to do that. We sometimes can fall into being like the world, be cynical and pessimistic and, oh, I doubt it. I doubt that God can do it. If God can create the world, God can do the impossible. Faith accomplishes what is impossible. And finally, faith inherits the indestructible. Faith inherits the indestructible. And as I was thinking about all the things that faith does in our lives and what we hope for, faith allows us to store up ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Faith inherits the indestructible. God tells us over and over again, place your faith in what is eternal and what is lasting and what will be there for all eternity. Store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Because we sometimes want to store up things for ourselves here on this earth, and they will wear out. And rust and, and uh, this, this old world is wearing out. Things that you buy new one day will be old tomorrow. And they won't be of any earthly good. But the things that you do by faith for Christ, believing in him, are things that God notes in heaven and there for eternity. Faith inherits the indestructible. And so why then, Jesus said, do we, we run around worrying about today? He said, don't worry about tomorrow. He's got that taken care of. Take care of today. Take care of the things that we need to trust in for today. Think about the relationships that we have with people, the things that will last for eternity. Because the last part of those seven verses that we read this morning in Hebrews 11 says that Noah was another who trusted God. And when he heard God's warning about the future, Noah believed him, even though there was no sign of a flood. And wasting no time, he built the ark and he saved his family. Noah's belief in God was in direct, if you will, contrast to, to the sin and disbelief of the rest of the world. Everybody else ignored what Noah was doing. But by faith, when he was warned about it, even though he hadn't seen rain and the flood come, it says in holy fear, Noah built an ark to save his family. And by faith, the world was condemned because they didn't listen to the message that Noah preached. And he preached and he preached. And the scripture tells us not one person turned. Just Noah and his family were saved because they had faith. 
not because they were righteousness, righteous in and of themselves, but they were righteous because of God. And they believed what God said. I think of this so often. When you think about Noah and Noah's ark, there was room. When that door was open, there was room for another person to come in. Not just the eight of Noah's family, but of all those that were going about their business in the wickedness of that time, there was room for one more. Noah preached the message that God had warned him about. He preached in fear, holy fear, it says. He could see how bad the world had gotten. And God said, build an ark. Build this ark of safety, which you and your family will be protected because I'm going I'm to flood the world. I'm going to wipe everything out. I'm going to start everything all over again. I share with you this morning that that's what the cross is. The cross is to us Jesus saying it is an ark of safety, the cross. That Jesus, when he went to the cross dying for us, was saying the door is open to be saved. The door is open today to be saved to get right, to be right today with me. There are so many that are ignoring that, so many that are missing that. They're missing what faith is all about. The door is wide open. One day the door will be shut. Just like Noah's ark, eventually God had Noah and his family enter the ark And he himself closed that door, and then it was too late. It was too late to get on the ark. It was too late to get right with God. And God tells us the same today. He's telling people in this day of grace, this day of truth, you know what? Now is the acceptable time. Now's the day to get right with him. Now's the day to understand what it is to really believe and to have faith in him. Are you holding off? Are you trying to hold out? Don't, because this might be your only day. This might be your only opportunity. What a message of grace that is. To know even when we come to the communion table that Jesus These are going to be elements that we're going to have served to us here in just a few moments. But they remind us that now is our opportunity to receive Christ as our Savior. To understand what it is to believe. And we we hear that message over and over. Jesus tells us, don't put it off. Don't wait. Don't wait. Believe and follow him. And so this morning as we uh, go to prayer, I'm going to ask that uh, we stop and think about what it means again to believe by faith. And uh, in just a moment uh, following my prayer, the deacons are going to come and we're going to share in the communion table. And uh, actually this morning uh, I'm going to ask Tyler to come and serve the communion table, which I appreciate. He's always gracious to do that. And it's, uh, it's nice for me to get the opportunity sometimes to sit and receive. But for us each to think about is, is these elements are shared, that we think about the price that was paid for our sins. And by faith we know that we can be forgiven and our lives can be changed and we can be who God wants us to be. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we're going to come to this communion table here in just a moment. I thank you, Lord, that uh, we can believe in all that you've told us, 
From the beginning of your word to the end of your word, it's true. In fact, the very fact that you created the world is truth. But then I even think about, Lord, your word telling us one day you're coming back again. And all the things we read from the beginning to the end in Revelation is that one day all people will one day stand before you and every knee will bow and every tongue confess. But that doesn't mean every person will have believed. It is our opportunity now to believe before you return again, before you come again. And so I thank you, Lord, for this morning and for this table and what it represents. And I pray that we will think deeply about it. And I thank you this morning that, Lord, we can share in this table knowing that it represents what you did on the cross. And I thank you for Pastor Tyler coming to share it here in just a moment, for the deacons coming to serve. And Lord, again, that we can just give thanks to you for what it was that you did for us on the cross. And pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.